I wouldn't say my iOS engineering pad was some kind of tough, but for sure it wasn't easy. And today I will tell you about it. I hope that it will be useful for you and you could build your own out of mine. And also by the end of this video we will try to create some kind of roadmap uh, so you can become iOS engineer too. Must admit my first job in IT wasn't uh, iOS development. I started about three years ago and my first job was front-end developer. Uh, why I want to mention it here because those skills that I gained there are quite important. First of all, uh, when I had my first offer, I wasn't actually aware of how the team is working, how the ecosystem is working and what I had to do, how the tasks are being managed and all of that stuff. So my first experience in that British company actually gave me a huge boost before I actually get to the iOS. That's where my path with iOS started. It was just a regular second year of university when I had an optional course of iOS fundamentals. Must to say that in university I had few more courses that are helping me out today. The most available for me was uh, SDLC course because it teaches you how team works, how to manage a team, uh, what kind of methods to uh, develop some app there is. Yeah, so I had my uh, iOS course and uh, it was okay for me because uh, I didn't even had a MacBook back then. We were programming on some old Mac minis in the university and uh, I thought it would be okay and it would be nice to gain some experience in mobile development beforehand. Uh, I wasn't thinking of it like, you know, my future job. But when I had my first lecture on iOS development, I kind of fell in love with that. So there we started at that course a few fundamental things. For example, Swift, a uh, programming language for uh, iOS development. Uh, another is Objective-C, but we haven't started it there. We started right away with the Swift. Uh, another, uh, what we have studied in Swift are variables, how they work, uh, optionals, and how to unwrap them. Also, if statements, wordlets, if lets, uh, of course, loops for each, uh, while, for, uh, and etc. All data structures, uh, like all of them that exist. Uh, fundamentals of UI kit. Uh, also, we were starting their local databases like Realm and Core Data. Uh, I haven't been using Core Data since my university because I'm really stick to Realm. And the last thing we were starting there was uh, OP, uh, Object Oriented Programming. And uh, that's also very important point to start with because if you don't know how to program in OP, uh, that's gonna be a problem in the future because uh, anyways you must learn how to do it. And another thing I want to answer today is do you need a university to become a real software engineer? I would say no because everything you do nowadays to become a software engineer is self-learning and self-development, self-improvement and etc. But if the university is quite good, it gives you the good knowledge, uh, I would recommend you to enroll to the university because it will give you not only the hard skills of your job, but a lot of soft skills. Like in my university, we have a public speaking. It's quite important. Team working, how to manage team, how to run a project and etc. So after my the university course had finished, I felt that I want to work in the iOS sphere and after that course I was self-learning. So the reason why I decided to go on with the self-learning is because I, I wasn't trusting my own skills to get my first job actually. So I wanted to 
do a couple more projects on my own and maybe study something new. First thing I decided to improve was the knowledge of UI kit because I felt that that's gonna be very uh, important and very useful in my first job because often when a trainee comes into the some kind of company uh, trainees being given some tasks connected with the UI stuff so during my period of self-learning I have uh, one fully developed app and two unfinished my first app that I started with and was finished was the weather forecast app that was a quite good app for me because I was learning different things in the UI kit and also I was learning how networking works. After that I tried to use some of SwiftUI in my next projects. Another project I believe it was run tracking app. Uh, I had some progress with it. I learned how to work with the maps, how to track user's position, how to persist the data correctly in Realm database. And another project was a clone of Spotify, yeah. So I was creating a clone on Spotify using SwiftUI. There I learned how to create a music player. I guess it's also nice, you know, how, know how to play the media in your app, how to play some videos, how to play some music, how to control it, and also a quite complex UI. So uh, during that three projects I was uh, highlighting the complex UI and that was my accent for the interviewer when I was having my first interview for a trainee iOS developer. So the first uh, company I was working in it was uh, my local outsource company and all of my job was to to learn of course to help other developers who are more experienced than me and uh, we had a lot of projects with the same uh, structure and the same theme. We were doing guide for tourists with a map and a, like tracks that you can bind to some points on the map. It was really interesting projects for me because actually it were my first commercial projects and I learned how to deal with the map you know, how to set points on a map, how to track user position once more and based on that position, you know, play music or play some speech, uh, any kind of media that we want actually to play. We have completed few these kind of projects and afterwards uh, my project manager, he trusted in me. He gave me the new project that we had. He decided that I can go with this project on my own and I don't need any other developer to help me with that. And that was my first commercial project that I have done on my own without any help. So the project was a reading app. What I had to do there is a quite a lot of job. First of all, I needed to create the architecture of the project. Uh, secondly, I needed uh, to learn how to place ads in the app. Uh, another thing, I needed to create the ecosystem myself, actually. Uh, all the UI myself. And that was also some interesting project. I was happy that I have enough skills to end the whole project by myself. And that project gave uh, my company, I think, about seven thousand uh, dollars in about four weeks. And after that is my turning point in the story. I had a job offer that I could just dream about. I had a job offer from Lithuanian company. They needed an Android and iOS developer for their kind of startup slash product. Uh, it was mobile banking. When I had the interview, my eyes were shiny and bright because I heard the tech stack they were using and I was quite impressed because there were a lot of new technologies that I wanted to learn. And moreover, 
the company was okay for me to catch on the ride and to learn those technologies on the go. And I couldn't just lose that opportunity, you know. The first thing that I was impressed when I passed the interview and I opened up the project is the architecture of the project. It was the same on the Android and the iOS. So my responsibilities on that project was to uh, create new features and create screens for features that had already existed before but hadn't any screens. Like we had the Android completed uh, till the release and we just needed to complete the iOS app uh, to that point that Android had and we had all the screens on the Android so the uh, main task was to transfer all the screens from Android to the iOS part. That was quite interesting, uh, I need to say. Uh, and uh, what technologies did I learn there? First of all, I got better in concurrency and uh, we were using First of all, we were using combine some of Rex Swift and modern Swift concurrency at the end. Another technologies we were using there is UIKit. Obviously, the app was built on UIKit, but used Stevia uh, as a framework for constraints and layout. And then we were using PromiseKit resolver for dependency injection, object mapper for, uh, you know, mapping the JSON data to actual object. Working there gave me a lot of experience. I actually became, I think, middle IOS engineer uh, in that company, but unfortunately we had to split our ways. So, the conclusion. In the start of this video, I said that we will create some kind of roadmap for you to become a iOS engineer and I have some notes right here, not to forget anything. So, first of all, uh, what do you need to become a cool iOS engineer? The first hard skill, you need to get comfortable with uh, Swift and OP. It will make your life much easier in the future. Secondly, get better in UIKit, preferably not storyboards because they aren't so popular in the market. <clears throat> then try yourself in SwiftUI. At least make one pet project with it to show off some skills on interviews. After that, get better in Grand Central Dispatch. Learn how app pulls data, displays info, reads inputs and so on. Then move on concurrency. And uh, don't forget about queues, threading, sync and async, and some dispatch barriers. Create network module for your, uh, yourself and use some external APIs, at least on a basic level. Then move uh, to make your app and code more clean. Use modularization, dependency injections, some frameworks for UI, and so on. Talking about frameworks, actually, I would recommend you to start off with Rack Swift or Combine, better both, because both of them are quite important on the market today. Then use, for example, Swiftject or Resolver for uh, dependency injections. And there are plenty of frameworks for the UI, but I stick to Stevia because I used it on my previous job and it's quite comfortable to work with. Also try working with as much APIs as you can to create networking and to get better in it. Don't forget about databases and design patterns. Le uh, learn at least how Fabric and Strategy and sil Singleton works, MVP, MVC, MVVM, MVI, that would be enough for the start. Last but not least, Git. Version control is extremely important too. And now is the sweetest part for you. I actually uh, have two resources to help you become an actual iOS engineer. And the first 
uh, will help you get better answering in the interviews it has a quite stack of interviews questions and you can train yourself to answer to it so it's the first link in the description or maybe in the comments I don't know yet another a big big important and useful thing for you is a list of frameworks uh, those frameworks are quite popular and being used uh, by a lot of developers today and also as a bonus I have for you another resource that has probably the most enormous amount of free APIs to use that I have ever seen and on that have a good one all right